Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you erase the gains of the proud, but reward the efforts of the lowly. Cleanse us from our pride, we pray, that we may enter into your presence. O oh God, you welcome us on your holy mountain, and we approach you in the name of the one who was. With him you were well pleased. Welcome us in his name, that we might learn from him the humility that brings forth the flower of righteousness. And teach us, Lord, that we may dwell in your presence forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Welcome back to chapel. It's a joy to gather, finally, after J term, together again, and a special treat and honor and privilege to have Bishop Christer Stendahl with us this morning and throughout the day. He is preaching this morning, and just a little bit about him. One could go on and on. But we welcome him to this city place on the way over. He said that he was born in Stockholm and loves the city, and so he feels at home here at Augsburg in the city. But Bishop Christer Stendahl is now Andrew W. Mellon Professor of Divinity Emeritus at Harvard. He was Bishop of Stockholm in Sweden, and now he resides in Cambridge with his wife, Britta. And he has written numerous articles and books, especially focusing on Jews and women and when one asked him why he focused on Jews and women, he said, the Christian Bible includes sayings that have caused much pain, both to Jews and to women. Thus, I have felt called to seek forms of interpretation which can counteract such undesirable side effects of my holy scripture. I heard Bishop Stendhal preach on Saturday night and uh, was filled up with good words, and so we welcome you this morning. We sang this Shaker song because I want to speak about simplicity. And I introduce it with the words from the prophet Micah. With what shall I come before the Lord and how bow myself before God on high? Shall I become before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. So said the prophet. And it sometimes happens when Christians listen to the Old Testament and to the prophets and to the straight talk about justice and merciful deeds and humility, that they think that that ain't Christian enough. There should be something about the gospel. And hence, the history of the church shows that Christians have seldom been the pioneers for justice. It sounded a little too secular. We actually came up with an English word for the church equivalent, and we call it righteousness. You had righteousness in the church, and you had justice in the world. So we, we always defended us a little against the straight talk of prophets like Micah. He uh, said that the preoccupation with the serious believers of his time was the whole sacrificial system with masses of sacrifices offered and even child sacrifices and whatever it could be, just to up the ante of holiness, just as Protestants up the ante when they hear this boilerplate language of Micah by saying there must also be something about the gospel, about forgiveness, 
about grace. The world may call for justice, but we offer love, which is awfully hard to those who has been sometimes exposed to our loving injustices. So, everything will ultimately be tested on the mica standards. As the sheep and the goats found out in that last parable of Jesus, of the last judgment, exactly the mica standards, the little ones who had been wronged, At justice. The uh, acts of mercy for those who were hungry and in prison, that's in that parable. And the humility was so great, according to Jesus, in the right attitude, so they didn't even know that they had done it. So that the Micah standards are also Jesus' standards. Seek ye first the kingdom and its justice, and all the rest will somehow fall into place. Don't you know that the scriptures say, I desire mercy and not sacrifices? And... Paul, speaking about the ultimate humility in Christ, who did not hang on to his divinity and his revelatory authority, but emptied himself and became a crucified criminal in humility. With those three brush strokes, of God's justice, mercy, and humility. One can draw the picture of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what the ultimate standard is, and whatever fancy theology I as a theologian have, and I have some, ultimately, this is the bottom line. Don't you know what the Lord requires of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly before your God. It is a gift to be simple. Amen. I'll make it. You can begin. <laughs> Let us pray. Blessed is the earth, for all it contains is the work of your hands. Teach us to use its abundance wisely and respect every living creature it sustains with justice, mercy, and humility. Blessed are the sick and those who mourn, who look to you for comfort and healing. On this day especially, we remember Josh Cagle and his family on the loss of his brother Chris. Help us respond to their needs, and especially Josh with compassion and generosity. Blessed is this community of faith, created by word and spirit and holy baptism. Forgive us our sins and help us to live in simplicity and peace. In your name we pray. Amen. Dr. Stendhal will be pronouncing the benediction, so I'm going to give the announcements at this point. I want to remind you that if you 
would, if you are free during the 11 o'clock hour, Dr. Stendhal will be in the Paul the Apostle class that today will be held in Saturn Auditorium. That's at 11 o'clock, so you are all invited to come there. We welcome you back, as Sonia has already done, but we also welcome someone new to our midst who's going to be giving us a, a boost in uh, campus ministry and church relations, and that's Jim Peterson, who is an old friend, well, he's a young friend, but an old-time friend, uh, who, who has uh, an illustrious career. He established the Lutheran Center in Mexico City and uh, has done some rather significant things in liberation theology, et cetera, down there, and uh, was with the church headquarters and doing some great pastoring prior to that, but an Augsburg Seminary grad, an Augsburg College grad. So, Jim, do you want to stand? We'll welcome you to our midst. And Lynn Lorenzen, uh, we do have a couple uh, extra minutes. Lynn has some good news for us, so where are you? There you are. Do you want to give us the good news? <laughs> Probably a little Welsh hymn singing, Lynn. She's thinking about it, I guess. Reminder that the uh, chapels for the rest of the week are as follows. President Frame tomorrow, Pastor Sonia Wednesday, and uh, contrary to one announcement, on Thursday there will be a mini convocation honoring Henry Gurton, who is NCAA Man of the Year. Uh, quite an honor, and he will also speak. And then Friday, I will speak. Let us continue by singing Thy Holy Wings. Let's stand. Now, may the blessing of God Almighty and compassionate be with you day by day, this week ahead, and to the coming of the kingdom. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and inspiration.
Amén.